Okay, I guess we're going to get started now, right? I mean, people are starting to come in. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What time is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you, Lisa. <laughs> yes. Nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I'm just going to get started since 35, 30 something, but um, welcome everybody to this uh, Mochi Magic demo. We're celebrating the release of Mochi Magic, this book right here. Um, it was released on the 24th of November, and um, I'm really excited to be here with Lisa Lynn of Hello Lisa Lynn, and also Snixy Kitchen, Sarah. The kitchen <laughs> and oh hi hi Zoella Zoella's joining us too is that how you pronounce her name Zoella is that how you pronounce your name yes <laughs> it's so cute that she can join us today that's awesome so yeah uh, as you know like um uh, Lisa does a lot of Asian recipes and a lot of dumplings, which are kind of similar to mochi because you use your fingers a lot to shape and form dough. Um, and then uh, Sarah does a lot of uh, mochi recipes and also gluten-free recipes. And mochi happens to be gluten-free because it's made out of rice. And I'll talk more about that later. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about the book before we get started. It has 50 different recipes of traditional and modern Japanese mochi. So we're talking daifuku mochi, which is mochi filled with red bean or filled with, um, uh, in this book we have truffle mochi. So we fill mochi with uh, chocolate truffles and white chocolate truffles um, with tints of matcha. <laughs> Zoella is holding the book too. Um, and, oh, wow, yeah, that's right. You guys have two copies. Um, and it has mochi cupcakes in it. I can kind of flip through a little bit. And there's like a detailed section on mochi ice cream, how to make uh, mochi ice cream at home. And then a lot about the history of mochi and the different kinds of ingredients that you'll see in mochi. And um, so there's also, so yeah, there's, uh, Four different ways to make mochi. There's steam, microwave, boiled, and baked. So we're going to be doing the two different methods today, which is we're using the microwave for the daifuku mochi. We're making a rose water mochi microwaved and filled with a white chocolate truffle, no, white chocolate strawberry truffle. And then we're doing boiled mochi too, um, which is odango, which are um, mochi dumplings pretty much that are put onto a skewer, um, three different colors green and white, and then we're going to slather it with a nice um, mitarashi dango sauce, which is kind of like a teriyaki sauce, but a little on the sweeter side. And um, so yeah, and there's also little tutorials of how to make your mochi cute in here, like we have mochi roses, how to make mochi roses is something my mom actually taught me. That's also in the book. And how to pound from scratch if you want to do that for the new year. And um, I'll talk even more about that at the end too. Also mochi donuts in here. Um, so the whole baked mochi, we have manju too. Manju is like a mochi that's made with um, flour. So kind of like a cake mochi. And then we have the cupcake mochi filled with red bean. I'm so um, excited and and a lot of different other recipes. Mo mochi waffles in here too. So the cover looks like it's only a kid's book, but I assure you it's for kids and for adults alike because there's um, simple recipes, cute recipes, and also more adult flavors too. All right, so I'm gonna talk more about the book later. Thank you, Zoella, for showing it off too. That's really sweet. <laughs> but, um, we're going to get into the recipe. And I think I saw someone with a question that said, if you want to um, not, if you don't have a microwave, you can actually use a stovetop. So I'll go over that too. 
And how about everybody just really quick, just chime in with where you're from so we can see the variety of people and where they're from joining us today. So your city, where you're, where you're calling, zooming in from today. Because we have a lot of different people here. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. Awesome. Cool. San Diego, California. Hello, Hawaii, the home of two ladies oh, yeah. in a kitchen. <laughs> wow, Hawaii and San Diego. Do you know? Do you know two ladies in a kitchen? It's a very famous mochi uh, place. Here. Yes, yes, yes. I've seen the big short story on that, the two ladies kitchen. Yeah, it's really. I really want to go there sometime. Yes, please come. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. San Francisco, California. Okay, cool. We're in Richmond, California, and our neighbor is on here too. Zoella just noticed her. Oh, yay. Awesome. Hi, Zo. So continue um, putting your, uh, your, where you're from in the chat box, but for now, we're actually going to mute everybody and we're doing a spotlight on um, me and Lisa and Sarah as we cook. And if you have any questions, we have an excellent moderator today. Her name is Julie Sasaki, and she will be moderating the chat box. So if you have any questions while you're cooking, just type them in the chat box and Julie will be asking them to me. So, um, yeah, sounds good. Julie, does that sound good? Yep, or, sounds good. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so, um, yeah, so we're, we're pretty much doing four different recipes. Some of them are really minor, like um, we're doing, we're gonna start with the strawberry truffle recipe, and then we're gonna go into making the, um, the dango sauce. And then we're gonna be making the rosewater mochi and the dango. So I like to go in that order because um, the truffle, the filling has to be made before the mochi is ready because the filling has to, um, yeah. Anyways, you'll get it as you go. So let's start with the strawberry white chocolate truffle filling. So we're starting with a third cup of freeze dried strawberries. I'm gonna pound that in my mortar and pestle here. I'm just going to get a third cup out and get my mortar pestle out of the way. So, grab this. These are going to go into our white chocolate truffle. Um, yeah, white chocolate truffles. So, I have about a third cup here. I'm going to put it right into my mortar pestle. And you can also use a spice grinder or a um, spice grinder or like a magic bullet should work for that. But I'm just gonna go ahead with this one. So I'm gonna um, this is blend it into a powder right now. Powder, is this measured before you grind it up? What was that? Can you say again? This is measured before you grind it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I measured the one third cup, yeah. So I'm just getting it into a really nice powder so that it'll integrate really well with our white chocolate and give off a really natural and strong strawberry flavor. And when you're making a truffle of any kind, um, you don't want the white chocolate to, um, what do you call it? Like, uh, oh, not coagulate. You don't want it to like separate. So that's why uh, using powdered fruit is really important as opposed to using fresh fruit. So this looks really nice and powdery by now. How are you guys doing, Lisa? I think I am okay. So mine looks like that. Yeah, that's that looks about good. Right, right? Yeah. 
We put our yeah. processor, so I'm, I'm muting so that I can put that loud sound on. <laughs> Somehow everyone sounds really quiet, so I'm going to try to see if I can make it louder. Oh, huh. okay. All right, cool. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get um, five tablespoons of butter here, and I already chopped it and put it in a bowl. And also one cup of white chocolate chips. And I like to use Ghirardelli just because, um, I don't know, it melts really well. I've tried like cheaper brands of white chocolate, but the Ghirardelli one melts really well for me. So I'm just gonna put that in, into the bowl. And also I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of heavy cream right inside the bowl too. So I put the, the cold butter and chocolate chips and the heavy cream right in the bowl. And then we're gonna be microwaving this for 30 seconds, for 30 seconds and then checking on it again and then another 30 seconds until it's pretty much melted. All right. Quality, and I'm assuming your temperature is pretty high in your microwave, right? Yes, that's a that's a really major point. I I didn't realize <laughs> I should have realized, but so many microwaves are different. But um, yeah, mine is pretty high. It's at a hundred percent. Okay. How about yours? Is it usually at a hundred? It's default to be at max. Um, but I remember sometimes when I write recipes, people are like, "Oh, it didn't work for me." So that's when I realize some people don't might not necessarily default to having the um, microwave on full blast, which I understand. <laughs> or they like mm. kind of change or like even maybe the microwave, the power is not quite as high, like uh, mm. vol voltage or like watts, you know, sometimes people's microwave power is a little bit different. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I, yeah, that's one thing that's super important. Um, I made a mistake. <laughs> oh, what happened? I added the strawberries to the white chocolate before I put it in the microwave. I'm, I'm hoping oh. that it's going to be okay. It's okay. It's okay. It'll be fine. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, it'll be fine. Strawberries will just get even like a little darker. That's it. Okay, so mine came out of the microwave and I'm just going to mix it with the... Uh, Okay, so it's pretty melty right now, but I'm going to keep mixing and see if it melts down fully yet. I just did 30 seconds. I think it's going to need another 30 seconds. Yeah, yours is still, there's still some major chunks in your truffle mix, right? Yeah, this still has major okay. chunks. I just want to um, see if it'll melt down a lot before I put it back in. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put it in for another, um, I'm going to do 20 seconds. I don't want to overcook it. pretty good. Uh, Lisa, and, have you ever made mochi before? Um, so we have something actually very, very similar to mochi. Um, we, cause so we don't use, we also use a type of sweet rice flour uh, mm. to make the, I guess they're called dumplings. Um, and my mom makes this, it's actually very, so she fills it with red bean paste. Um, oh. And she makes a dough with sweet rice flour, basically, and then rolls it in some coconut. Um, and she calls it the white hay. 
um, it's kind of like the dialect that my family speaks. Um, yeah. And so I haven't made it myself and I, it's like time for me to start cooking it. So I thought this is a good way for me to start working, um, with sweet rice flour to make this dessert. Yeah. So is the one your mom makes, is that like, is it boiled? So is she, um, she, she um, you, she ba uses hot, I think, oh no, no, no. She steams everything and oh. then cuts out a piece and then flattens it with her hands and then just stuffs it and then seals it up like that. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like mochi pretty much. Yeah. Just like, Chinese stuff, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So my chocolate's gotten pretty uh, silky. So mine still has, this might just be butter, so I'm just gonna keep mixing it until I think it's melted. Um, can you also explain again, like why you don't want to overheat the chocolate? Um, like why you don't just stick it in the microwave for a longer period of time until everything melts and then just mix everything together. Yeah, yeah. So it starts to kind of separate, like the, um, the chocolate gets really gritty and kind of separates from the liquid somehow. Um, and so I've noticed that with like, if you buy like Safeway brand chocolate or whatever, it doesn't do the same thing as this chocolate. But yeah, if you overheat it too, it'll likely burn and it'll also um, uh, separate. Uh, so we, this is what ours looks like with the strawberry oh. added to this look. That looks good. That looks perfect. So yeah, it should look silky. And then I'm gonna add in my um, strawberry powder right now. Someone asked about stovetop. Did you, I didn't hear, did you um, let people know what to do if they don't have a microwave right now? Oh yeah, so, so yeah, sorry, yeah. Stovetop, um, you're going to heat it in a nonstick pot on um, medium high heat until everything melts down pretty much. And then take it off the heat right away. Okay. You, you could also do it in a double broiler. I haven't, I haven't actually tried this, but. And like with oven? No, like a paint, like a bowl on top of like a pot of boiling water. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. That's how they usually make like um, chocolate, right? Like um, yeah, yeah, like a ganache or something. Ganache, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You can totally do that. So you can put a bowl over a pot of boiling water and melt it down that way too. That's a great way to do it. That's actually probably better. <laughs> so you don't burn the chocolate. I just recently burned three bags of white chocolate trying to melt it by overheating. Really? The described it. Oh my gosh, three bags? It was, I was being impatient. We were trying to make cake balls. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And I kept burning it. Oh man. It's so easy to burn though. No, we're going to see this. Okay, so we're going to put this uh, truffle mixture into the freezer now. So we're gonna put it in the freezer so it can cool down. Joanne's asking, what's the difference between mochiko flour and glutinous rice flour? Mochiko flour and what? Mochiko flour and glutinous rice flour. I think the rice is different. Um, oftentimes glutinous rice flour comes from the Thai style long grain glutinous rice ground into a flour. And then mochiko is more of a Japanese style uh, sweet rice that's short grain that's ground up. But I think functionally they are quite similar. It's just the rice itself is different. Yeah, right. That was a super good explanation. I actually have the Thai brand too. It's like a clear bag with like green writing on it. And I've used yeah. it for mochi recipes and with the same ratio and it's been completely fine. But the texture for the Thai one, it's like super soft. Um, it's like really, really soft and more liquidy as a batter. So it's kind of interesting. Is it okay if my um, strawberries kind of grainy on the inside? It's not like, I guess I couldn't, that's as about as powdery as I could get the strawberry. So like I can still see the strawberry. Bits yeah, that's, that's totally okay, fine. Right? Okay. 
Yeah. So usually I refrigerate it, um, but since we're kind of on a, in a, we're in a one hour time frame, we're going to put it right in the freezer and that'll speed up the cooling process. Okay, so now we're going to go on to making the Odango sauce. We're kind of working backwards because, um, yeah, you'll see everything will come together at the end. But we want to make the sauce ahead of time so it's easy to put it on the mochi at the end. Okay, so let me go get those ingredients right now. They're just right behind me. Okay, so you know, I'm gonna turn on some extra lights to make it brighter. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Do we have some questions, Julie, before I get on to the next one? Yeah, we have one question. Um, Nick is asking if the butter melted, should they start over? No, the butter is supposed to melt down. So that's, yeah, you don't need to start over. Everything uh, should be melting down completely. And then Susan Murray, I see that your hand is raised. Did you have a question? Maybe not. <laughs> Those are all the questions we have so far. If anybody has any more questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Oh, Shibani says they only had glutinous rice flour available. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. You can use a glutinous rice available. Uh, I'll show everybody what that one looks like compared to the mochiko. So I, I'll explain a little bit, like Lisa was talking about it too, but this is the Thai glutinous rice and it's still um, mochiko and this rice are um, like Lisa was saying, this is sweet short grain rice, which is Japanese style. And this is a long grain Thai rice, but they're both um, glutinous rice. They are both characterized as sweet rice or glutinous rice because when you cook them, they get really sticky. And uh, glutinous doesn't mean it has gluten in it. It just means it's like um, really super sticky. So these are both sweet rices, but they're just different kinds of rice. And this one's made by um, a third generation Japanese family farm near LA. So um, it's really, uh, I really like this. I, I use mochiko for almost all of my recipes, but this one still works for daifuku mochi. So it's also a good brand. And I feel like the uh, Thai glutinous rice you can find more often at the store. Carrie okay, so we're gonna go on to the um, soy glaze for the dango. Do we have time for one more question, Carrie? Yeah, sure. So Carrie was asking if you've tried any other freeze dried fruits that work well, or have you used the fruit powder to flavor the mochi itself? Uh, oh, like inside the mochi dough. I feel like for mochi dough, I would probably use a juice instead of, I mean, you can use a powder, but if I've had more success using juice. Like for example, if you wanna make a mango filled mochi and you want the mochi dough outside to taste like mango too, then you would use a mango juice in place of water. So I think juices work really well for making, uh, mixing with the mochi. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So we're gonna make the glaze now. So we need um, one half cup water. And the recipe I sent everybody says two tablespoons sugar, but it's actually three tablespoons. My bad, I, um, I looked in my book right before class and it's actually three tablespoons of sugar. So we're gonna combine um, the one half cup of water, the sugar, um, the one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of marin, which is a sweet sake, Japanese sweet sake, 
and the cornstarch, basically everything all in one pan. So I'm using like a small flat pan, but you can use a small like nonstick pot too. So I'm gonna get the water for that. One All right. And you know what? I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of sugar just because I don't like things too sweet. And if it needs more sweetness, I'm gonna add an extra tablespoon later. Have you guys had Odongo before? Sarah and Lisa and Zoella? This is the one that I picked because of the colors. We haven't made it before. What was that? She's the one, she, she picked this one. She wanted to make this one because of the colors. When she looked through. Oh, it. because of colors. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, I think I've only had it once before, but um, we make a very similar thing in Chinese cuisine. Um, it's tong yun or tang yun, and it's like, but using glutinous rice flour, the Thai style, and mm. then you um, cook. So you heat, the, you cook the dough by adding hot boiling water into the flour to get it sticky and pliable mm. and glutinous, and then you usually boil them. So there's like a ton of different ones. There's like ones with filling inside, or like ones that are just, just the the dough piece, and then it could be savory or sweet too. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen the tang 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 yuan, um, the sesame black sesame one, but mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen other flavors. So that's really interesting. Yeah, there's some you could put. Uh, peanut is a good filling, or or some coconut and peanut in there. Um, red bean paste or azuki bean paste is like another one, um, another common filling too. Kiwi paste, you said? No, um, red bean paste. Oh, red bean paste yeah <laughs> and then you just boil it and then you have like a like a gingery sweet soup that you eat with it mm -hmm. yeah that's super cool i really want to eat that, that sounds yeah good. that's it's a um new year's thing that you usually make for lunar new year very mm. often yeah it's interesting how mochi has so many different roots in different asian cultures yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just going to whisk, whisk up those, the sauce here. I'm making sure that the, there's no clumps with the cornstarch and it's fully dissolved in the, in the sauce. I think I forgot the marinade. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna heat this sauce. Right now it looks like not clear at all, but it's gonna turn from like this murky, muddy into like a really clear teriyaki type sauce. So we're just gonna put it on medium high heat and then simmer it until it gets super uh, glossy and thick. And then we're gonna take it off the heat and put it in like a small bowl. Okay, cool. I'm gonna move this stuff. Lisa, I had a question about your dumplings. Do you ever put like, are there any dumplings that have mochi inside of them? Like savory dumplings? That has mochi inside? No. Yeah. Or you mean, um, usually it's like a mochi on the outside with a lot of filling, can be sweet or savory, but I don't think I've ever had one with mochi on the inside. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, like little pieces of it? Yeah, I guess so. Like little chunks yeah, of it. Yeah, no. 
I don't think I've had that before. There is like um, isn't there something in Chinese uh, cuisine of like sweet rice that's uh, steamed in like a banana leaf yes. with like pieces of meat in it? Yes, no um, maikai. Yeah, <laughs> I've said so. That's like the Cantonese way of saying it. Um, yeah, with um, so we don't use banana leaf. It's usually lotus leaf, but it's like it's really oh. big, like that. Um, so that it's when you rehydrate the lotus leaf, it's really soft and easy to fold with. Oh, very cool. I think someone has a question. I think I had about it when I was in Malaysia visiting a friend. Oh, you know, in Malaysia, it totally makes sense if they're using banana leaf. Uh, oh, um, really? Yeah, because I think there's more, um, like where in Southern China, where that dish comes from, it's usually, I don't like, they don't really throw bananas um, over there, but I feel like Malaysia is a more tropical climate. So it makes sense that they would use banana leaves too. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, someone, someone linked to a Wikipedia article. Um, it's funny because, Yeah, sometimes okay. people pronounce it low mic. Anyway. Harry, we have like, a question. I'm having a hard time hearing everybody for some reason, but. We have some questions. Are you ready? Okay, Lee, I'm just going to show the sauce really quick. It's kind of bubbling, so I'm going to turn it off now. Carrie, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So some questions are, um, did you stir the soy glaze or did you just leave it alone? Did I wet the glaze? Did you stir it or did you just let it simmer? Oh yeah, sorry. I, I did stir it okay. the whole time. I think it's important to stir it. And then how much cornstarch did you use? I used uh, two teaspoons of cornstarch. Okay, cool. Those are all the questions so far. Okay, cool. So yeah, it should be nice and thick by now and I'm gonna pour it into a bowl. I thought it had little chunks in it, but actually those were just bubbles, so that's good. I'm going to reserve the sauce for later. I think that's it. Not gyoza. Here's a little dongga. No, I'm saying gyoza. I want to eat gyoza. That's all. <laughs> okay. Let's back now. Okie dokie. Okay, cool. So we have the glaze set and I'm just gonna put it on the side. Um, should be like a nice dark color, pretty sticky, um, but not too sticky. Still has like a weight, like you can still kind of stir it around and it'll still move around. Um, so we're gonna be going on to the dong. Actually, yeah, so I think we should do the dongo first because I'm gonna check on the truffle. So we're looking for the truffle mixture to be pretty, um, pretty firm to the touch. Yes. Oh, yes. This recipe is in the Mochi Magic Book. Uh, it is on page 128 of Mochi Magic for the Mitarashi um, glaze sauce, page 128. Okay, so I'm going to Check in the truffles and let's see if they're firm to the touch yet. Okay. All right, so they're not firm yet. Um, if I'm trying to poke it and it still goes through. It should be pretty firm to the touch. So I think we should make our odango first and then we'll go back to the truffles. All right, so how are you guys doing? Lisa and Sarah, do you get are you guys ready to go on? Yeah? Okay, cool. Awesome. Are you ready to go on? My bird is got stuck in my seat. What did she say? Nothing. Her foot got stuck in her chair. 
Oh, I see. <laughs> Aww. Okay, so we're going to go on to the dango now. So um, I already kind of set my ingredients out. So I have two cups of mochiko here. I put in one bowl. Uh, four ounces of tofu. I use silken tofu here. Um, yeah, and then what's this tofu? I like to use this tofu. This one's easy to use, and I like to use silk, uh, silken because it really meshes with the mochiko. And then I have one quarter, uh, one half cup water, just in case we need a half cup. So it's very pretty straightforward. So we're just gonna dump the two cups of mochiko into the tofu. And then we're gonna add a quarter cup of water first to start out. If we need more, we'll add it. And then I like to use my hands for this part, but um, if you don't want to use your hands, you can just use a spatula. But we're basically going to mash everything together. By the way, if you don't want to use water and you want more tofu, you can even use um, you can use seven ounces of tofu instead of instead of adding the quarter cup of water. Just letting you know. If you want more protein in your dango, you can do that. So I'm gonna to start to mash it together. Definitely gonna need yeah so it's gonna be basically a mochi dumpling. And then we're gonna dye it. Um, we're gonna do the three different colors. So I'm gonna actually put in the rest of my water to so the full half cup. And I always eyeball it, so I might need to add more depending on the texture, but I'm looking for like a smooth Play-Doh texture. Okay, so I'm gonna add another quarter cup because it's looking a little dry. So how, how much total have you added so far? Yeah, you can put your hands in it. What, what was that? How much total water have you added so far? I've added a half cup and now I'm adding another quarter cup. Oh, do you, is there something buzzing in around you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh oh, did I make you do something you shouldn't have? I lost your video. Oops, I'm so sorry, guys. I just thought I heard a buzzing sound. You added Lisa. There we go. Oh, wow, the volume came back. Great. I can hear you guys much better. I don't know why that happened. Okay. Is your mochi starting to look pretty uh, play doh -y? Yeah, mine is pretty. Okay, good. Harry, we have some questions. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot. Carrie, can you right, hear me? So should the whole thing sticking together? Yeah, let's get it. Is it is there a feedback on my video? Okay, let me let me see if I can get it. I think it's it's gone away now for me. How about you guys? Can you still hear feedback? Um, can you say something one more time? Hi. It's better now, yeah. Um for a while I was hearing feedback, but I think you're okay. Okay. 
I didn't hear your answer. Um, sorry, is it supposed to be like one giant ball? I can't really see yours. Can you hold it a little closer? Sorry, I know my ball is white. Oh, okay. yeah, it's a huge mass now. Um, I forgot sugar, so we need to add sugar right now. Uh, three tablespoons of sugar. What's It's sticking all to my hands. Okay, so mixing in the sugar. Carrie, we have some questions if you're ready. Okay, go ahead. So somebody is asking, GB is asked, can you speak to the Mochiko a bit more? Can you buy it at the supermarket and what brand is best? I think Mochiko, um, the Coda Farms brand is best, the one I was showing, showing right here. And um, you can buy it uh, reliably at um, Japanese and Korean stores have it and then um, some Chinese stores have had it and some I feel like haven't had it. So I would, I know like Korean stores for sure have it for some reason. We so get would, a local market down the street. I think all the like small markets here. You said you, you found it where? We get it at our like local natural grocery down the street. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So some natural, like independent stores will have it too, which is good. Someone's asking how sticky the dough should be. Okay. So yeah, it should, when you, when you work with it, it shouldn't be sticking to your hands too much, which mine kind of is. So I'm going to add like another two okay. tablespoons. Okay. Can I get another all right, when do results differ using sheer tamako versus mochiko? I honestly don't use sheer tamako. Oh, for odango, yeah, actually, traditionally they use sheer tamako instead of mochiko, but um, I just grew up using mochiko and tofu, so that's kind of how I do it, but I know that um, you can definitely use sheer tamako. Okay, so my mochi's getting good. It's more play doughy. It's not sticking to my fingers too much. So maybe a little bit more. How about your guys' dough? Is it sticking to your fingers? I have a little bit. I have a little bit more. Um, but Chico, and I think it, it feels like Play-Doh. Does this feel like Play-Doh? You're the Play-Doh expert. Uh, I can't dry your hands. Oh, dry your hands, baby. Let's put that on the floor. Right now you dried your hands. Feel it. Play-Doh? Yeah. Feels like Play-Doh. It actually feels like really thin. So we're gonna split it into three equal pieces and put them in separate bowls. I just kind of eyeball. I don't really weigh it and separate it. I just eyeball it. So I'm putting in three big circles, three big balls and separating them. Okay, and then what we're going to do is add uh, one tablespoon of red food coloring to one of the balls. Oops, I accidentally did two, table, two drops. That's okay. Did I say tablespoon? That's weird. Um, one drop of red food coloring in the center of the ball. And then... Um, before we, yeah, we can start to mix it. So you wanna massage the dough and mix that food coloring in there until it's all completely pink. And if it gets too sticky again, just add a little more mochiko. 
Can you add water if it's too crumbly? Yes, yes, definitely. But I would start with just a little bit of water, like maybe one teaspoon at a time. Yeah, you definitely don't want it to be crumbly. Interesting. I got my food coloring from Whole Foods and it's like a plant-based dye, but it looks a little bit different from like a traditional red food dye. Are you guys using um, regular food dye, red food dye? I ended up bought this. Oh, go ahead, Kara. We <laughs> don't use the regular because that's what you do. Oh. You, is it in your hands? Or should I be adding a little bit more? Maybe you can add a little more if it's sticking a lot. Okay. Oh, that's okay. You can actually. I think the food dye makes it wet again, so you have to add a little bunch to it. I accidentally dumped my third piece of dough into a bowl filled with water, so that don't do that, guys. <laughs> Worse the wise. Is it, is it completely uh, disintegrated in there? No, I'll figure it out. No worries. <laughs> Just add, add more. Yeah. <laughs> you have a. Yeah, my dough is kind of like purple. Weird. I think they use beet juice for this natural food. So it's like not really. Yeah, I'm using a plant-based food dye by Watkins, and it looks magenta, more magenta than red. It'll become darker pink. Oh, well, she has. Let's check on that. All right, I'm done with mine pretty much. So I'm going to leave it on the side. And then for the next one, we're going to do one teaspoon of matcha. Okay. All right. It'll, it'll be harder to become one unicorn green color. So I'm going to bring it over there. I'm using culinary grade matcha. What are your favorite brands of matcha? You guys mind sharing? I'll show you. We're using Encha, and I'm using, I have their like lots of grade with them and their um, ceremonial. And I'm using the ceremonial because it's like, Super vibrant green. Mm -hmm. So I thought can that I might miss the color. Oh, no, put it in. Put it in this so we can see. 
Lisa, how about you? What kind of matcha do you like to use? So I'm using the same one that Sarah is um, because it's the greenness is very good. So I, I used to work for a company that sells matcha powder. Um, and like I, Enchaz is pretty good at a relatively good price point. Their, lat their latte grade is um, one that I would use for cooking, but obviously I think you're using a culinary grade, right? Yeah, is latte grade a little bit higher than culinary? For this company, it is, but I don't think it's an official designation. I think they, that's just what they call it. And um, I don't know if anybody in the audience is wondering what different matcha grades are, but it's just, um, it's kind of, it depends on how the growers um, treat the leaves before they're picked and once they're picked, how, they, how much they oxidize it. And so typically ceremonial is like the best one, the most expensive one that you usually use for eating. And then the other stuff is like, what you would use for cooking or whatever. Zoella wants to ask you a question. Oh, what is what was your question again? You don't need to scream in my ear. Just tell me. <laughs> Well, can you use to make more, to make a good matcha mochi? You don't have any matcha. I don't think you can make it. She wants to know what you can use to make matcha mochi if you don't have any matcha. Oh. Uh, I don't think you can make matcha mochi without matcha. Yeah. That's without matcha. Do you have, what was your other question that you were asking? <laughs> There's actually a matcha cream cheese uh, recipe in the book that I can show everybody. This is it here. It's a matcha mochi on the outside and then it's a matcha cream cheese. So it's kind of like a matcha cheesecake mochi, but it's definitely one of my favorites. And there's also a recipe in the book for um, a white chocolate truffle, like the kind we're making today, except you add matcha powder instead of adding this um, freeze-dried strawberries. So there's a lot you can do with this um, white chocolate truffle recipe in the book. You can add like koji cup powder, you can add matcha powder. Um, there's also black sesame truffle. So you could do like um, black sesame powdered up if you grind it in a spice blender and then put it, mix it with cream cheese or mix it with the uh, white chocolate truffle. Makes a really good filling too. Oh, I have a question. Um, I don't know if anybody else in the audience thinks um, has this too, but can you make this dough ahead of time? And how far ahead would you make it? Yeah, you can make it ahead of time, wrap it up and refrigerate it. So I'm pretty much done with all of mine. So I'm gonna start boiling a medium pot of water because we're gonna actually gonna boil these guys. <laughs> And then while it's boiling, we can start to form these into little balls. So I'm gonna do like, I'm gonna make them about like one inch wide, one inch wide balls, just like this. And maybe set them in like a baking tray or something. And then we're gonna roll everything into one inch balls and boil them before we give them an ice bath and then put them in a, put them on sticks, on skewers. 
I'm just rolling them into one inch balls. Oh, should we check our strawberry truffle filling? Yes, let's check on that. Good idea. Oh, yeah, it's pretty firm. Okay. So my filling is feeling pretty firm. It's still um, kind of pliable. So I think we can still wait until we um, put all the Odongo into balls. And then by then, I think it'll be ready. Do we have any audience questions, Julie? Just got one um, about how many balls does this recipe make? So this will make about, let me check. I know it has 10 skewers. 10 skewers, so it'll make, um, and skewers is Wait a second. I think it'll make more than ten. I think around um, twenty balls, twenty small balls of each colored dough. And does the matcha mochi taste noticeably different from the other two. Mm -hmm. so, taste different? Yeah, if the matcha ball takes tastes different from the pink in the other color. Yeah, if you have a matcha, then you can add more. But I would say it's not like a really, really yellow flavor. It's like more of a lighter. The sound isn't working for me. Is anyone else having trouble hearing her? Can you say something again, Cody? Hmm. Yeah, I don't hear you right now. Let me try uh, unmuting. Oh, there you go. You're back now. Okay, good. Can you repeat that answer again? Can you hear me, Sarah? Say that again. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's it, there's a lot of feedback. Oh, shoot. Okay. Maybe try, to try bringing your um, phone a little bit closer. I think it's supposed to make 10 per color. Somebody just asked this question. Yeah. That's how many we got. Yeah, you can make one last one. I but I kind of made them all the same way, so it's okay. Whatever number you have, you can work with. So I'm going to keep balling these out. <laughs> I don't think we ever heard your answer to the, the if the matcha one tastes different. Can you repeat that? Oh, is that where I got silent? Yeah, it got a little muffled around then. <laughs> Um, basically, yeah, the matcha flavor is not going to be super duper strong. So if you want a really strong matcha flavor, I would add more matcha to your mochi. But it, it is going to get a darker color than the dough right now because when it boils, it just becomes more um, translucent. So it's going to get dark, become a darker green color. How are you guys doing? I know this part takes a while, <laughs> especially when you're making a lot. I am doing okay. I am doing good. I think this, yeah, this is like exactly what I do with my mom. <laughs> uh, one texture, right? Yeah, um, we boil. So this is the one we boil also. And um, my mom can roll three at a time, which I have no idea how she can do that. I can only do two. Um, she always like brags about how good she is. I'm sure all mothers are like that. 
And you'll probably be rolling for balls. I will tell you that you're not. I'm cutting carrots wrong. Yeah, so like Sarah helped me with um, a video shoot once and my mom was there too. And then Sarah, Sarah was just chopping up some carrots and my mom like stopped Sarah as she was chopping. She's like, no, 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 do it this way. And I was horrified because I was just like, mom, just let her do her own thing. Stop trying to take over. I'm using a, a one inch uh, cookie dough scoop to make it faster for us. Is that a one inch? Yeah, it's just like a one inch, um, one tablespoon scoop. Yeah. But then I can just like roll the balls. That's really smart. That also makes it more uniform. You don't have to like guess. And my sink is ready. Well, we're gonna have to cook them all. I'm putting on the skewers to cook them. Okay. This is gonna make a lot of odango, so I hope you guys have people who wanna eat it. <laughs> Otherwise, you can probably freeze it, actually, af after you make it. Lisa, we have a question for you. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, I'm ready. What are the skin and arm protectors that you're wearing? Oh, <laughs> so, um, cause it's cold now. I like wearing long sleeves in the kitchen and my mom made these for me. Um, a lot of Chinese ladies wear these. So they're just sleeve protectors. Since I'm working with flour, I don't want it to dirty my sleeve. So I'm wearing the sleeve protector. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I've never like heard of, I mean, maybe I've seen that at like Daiso and stuff, maybe. Yeah, um, it's really convenient. It looks tacky, but I love it. <laughs> it's mostly to keep your hands warm or your arms warm no it's to, so these are to keep um so they're to protect my shirt sleeve so it doesn't get dirty wow. i'm wearing long sleeves right now um and like my mom usually wears long sleeves when she's cooking too and she just doesn't want like raw meat to get onto her sleeve or like if she's making something with a lot of flour she doesn't want to get her sleeves dirty so she'll put on the sleeve protector. Oh, I see. I lost my assistant. Okay. I'm gonna get my shoes. So mine are pretty much done. I think um, we added too much food coloring. <laughs> Okay, well, let's be extremely pink. <laughs> Fun for her. Okay, so I'm going to add my balls into my water now because it's boiling. And I'm all done with these. So I'm going to add all of them in. Did you, do you add them all at once? At the same time, all the colors? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to boil it until it, it starts rising to the top and then uh, boil it for two minutes more after that. Did you say you prepared an ice bath for when you go down to? Right, yes, this is a good time to prepare the ice bath for the dongo after they come out.
Oh, I was muted. That's weird. Okay. Ice bath is ready. It's just um, maybe two cups of ice and some water. And I'm waiting for them to boil right now. I'll show you what it looks like over here. Let's switch the camera. So they're still getting hot here. I think it stopped boiling because I put all the dumplings in. Okay, just gonna wait. <laughs> I'm going to cover it with the lid just so it goes faster. Okay. Okay. anyone have questions so far? Anybody who's uh, watching right now? Dorothy, do you have a question? Okay, here, I'm gonna ask to unmute you. You can unmute yourself. Or you could type your question in the chat too. Oh, I wish I could read your lips, but I can't hear you. <laughs> I think you have to unmute yourself, Dorothy San. Can't hear you. Oh, okay. Someone asked if you should uh, soak the odongo sticks. And I think that's actually a good idea because when we put them under the broiler, um, we don't want them to burn. So if you soak them in water right now, then um, they won't burn when we put it under the broiler. So you can do that right now. Just soak. Um, let's see, it's going to make about 26. 26 in the Sorry, I finally figured out how to unmute. I'm having problems. Um, I can't chat anything. Um, so thank you for unmuting me. I had a question about um, A, freezing them, or um, I know some mochi you can't refrigerate, and this is a lot of mochi we're making. What do you recommend? Keeping it at room temperature in a stored container, freezing it, um, et cetera. Thank you. Okay, um, for the Odongo mochi? Actually, for both. For the uh, Daifuku one, the one we're going to make a little later, uh, I usually keep it at room temperature, actually, or else it gets hard. Um, or you can freeze it right after cooking it. And then actually at, once you defrost it, it'll be the same texture. But you have to freeze it pretty much right after you cook it. And then the, great. Um, the refrigerated, but I, then you'll have to microwave it again to make it soft. I think um, for, oh, sorry, like, because I make similar stuff for the odango. Um, sometimes you can also freeze it raw. So just line a plate with parchment and just freeze it raw. Um, it will crack a little bit, um, but when you put it in boiling water, the hot boiling water will seal up those cracks. So you won't even notice it when you're eating. Um, and then you just maybe need to add like an, oh, because it's you're adding a frozen ball into boiling water, you might just need an extra minute cooking it. Um, but if you, yeah, freezing it raw and then cooking it whenever you want to eat, it totally works too. That's a really good cool. Thank you. You freeze it before you cook it and then you can just cook it and then put it on the skewer, right? Yeah, I think that's a really good tip. Lisa, we had a question for you. Um, what grade of matcha would you recommend if you want to use it for cooking and drinking? I know you kind of- um, there, but... Yeah, so like, 
it depends how much money you're willing to spend really. But I say for normal cooking, just use culinary grade because you're mixing it with so many other things too. Um, the more expensive stuff, you might want a higher grade because the um, culinary grade, oftentimes when you drink it, it's very, very bitter. I mean, matcha is bitter to begin with, but there's this extra level of grassiness to lower grade matcha. Um, so the one that Sarah and I are using, um, Encha, their latte grade is great for drinking, um, but it's not cheap. It's like $21, $22 for two ounces of matcha. But if you think you're gonna use it for cooking very often and you're not, and you just wanna play with it, just use a culinary grade because it's a lot more affordable. Um, culinary grade matcha also looks darker too. Um, it has a very deep green color or an almost grayish. So if, um, if like visuals is something very important to you and you're maybe gifting something, then you might want to go for a slightly higher, more expensive grade of matcha. I hope that answered the question. And I don't know if Sarah has anything to add to. No, I mean, I, I always use the latte grade, um, except for like something like this, where I like want the presentation to be really green. But the Encha latte grade is like almost indistinguishably green from their um, ceremonial grade, which is like significantly more expensive. Um, I don't even keep the culinary on hand anymore because the la latte, I mean, I drink, I drink a latte, every, a matcha latte every morning. So I go through it really quickly. <laughs> You said you use the latte one for um, cooking as well, for baking? Yeah, because I have it. Okay, and it's a little less expensive than, do they sell culinary grade as well, or just uh, latte? Yeah, I just don't have it. So, yeah, the, well, they actually don't sell culinary anymore. They used to. Um, yeah. I looked it up on Amazon, and they discontinued their culinary one. Um, yeah, ceremonial is very high grade, really just meant for drinking. Um, but if you like, if you're like us and photographing food is your trade, then you probably want to cook with ceremonial because you want that really pretty green color in your food. But for, I think for normal, normal people, um, yeah, I yeah, the like, culinary is fine. Yeah, culinary or matcha I is fine. The culinary, like if you're not, especially if you don't drink a lot of matcha, like, um, it's, it's like very bitter and you'll think that you don't like matcha. Mm. Carrie, what will happen if you mix the Thai glutinous flour with wheat flour? Will that harden it? Wheat flour? Yeah, with wheat flour. Oh, I've never actually mixed those two together. Um, it'll probably still be soft because of the glutinous flour, but... I don't know, that's a good question. Is it because they ran out of, um, you ran out of Thai glutinous flour? Is that why you want to use wheat? I think some people just can't find the mochiko, so they want a way to use the Thai glutinous flour without it being too soft. Interesting, got it. Do, think um, so, oh, for those people, I don't know about adding rice flour, but you could also use regular rice flour too. So if you are familiar if you have the glutinous rice, you're familiar with the colors of the bag. Green is glutinous rice and red is rice flour, um, which is made with usually Thai long grain jasmine rice. And that should work too. And it's not quite as gooey as uh, glutinous rice flour, but it's still, it will give the proper texture as opposed to wheat flour. I hope that made sense. So, so you're saying for this, um, this brand, they also have a regular rice flour, right? That's red letters. Yeah, yeah I haven't, I've, yeah. So it's like the whole bag, the color scheme is red. Um, and let me see, so I use that a lot. Um, the three elephant brand. So this is how the regular rice flour would look like. And you could mix in a little bit of that um, with the glutinous rice flour, if you think the glutinous, the Thai cell is too firm. Um, if you can't find this, I know Bob's Red Mill makes a rice flour too, that's sufficient. So then that way you don't have to like sacrifice too much of the texture. 
Mm, yeah, I think using wheat flour, I don't really know. It might still be like a dumpling-ish, but I don't think it'll be as bouncy and chewy. We have a few questions about um, what if people's um, little mochi balls aren't floating after four minutes, and if they come out a little bit undercooked, can they put them back in and cook them more? Oh, we couldn't hear you, Kari. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yep, you're good now. Oh, put them back in and cook them more until, and maybe like take one out and take a bite out of it. It should be completely like cooked through. So there shouldn't be any like loose dough on the inside. Okay, so uh, my mochi balls are done. I think I'm gonna add a little more ice and just keep them on the side while we make the um, daifuku mochi. What happens if the mochi balls crack? Does that mean it needs more water? Yeah, that probably means it needs more water. Excuse my ice machine uh, noise. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little more ice to it and just let them sit here and chill. I might drain some water out. I don't want them to get too soggy. You might lose their texture if I do that. So I'm gonna drain out water and just, just leave a, a little bit of ice on top. Okay, just like that. All right, so are you guys good to go on to the next one? Lisa and Sarah? Yes. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go on to making the rose water mochi now. We're gonna go a tiny bit over time. I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, but this next part should come together. So we're gonna get out our truffle again and we're gonna actually roll them into balls. The, um, the white chocolate truffle. Can I ask you a question about the dango really quick? Mine don't look as like smooth as yours. Like, can't really show you a picture, but they almost look like, maybe I cooked them a little too long. What would happen if you cook them too long? Um, they might be kind of soft. Okay. I mean, they're not, they're not that soft. They're just like, I'm looking at your beautiful picture. <laughs> like mine aren't as pretty. That, that was mine. Oh yeah, it's okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe if you, anyways, say that again. Maybe if you put um, more mochiko next time, it'll be easier to mount, or it'll stay as tight as a ball, I guess. Yeah, maybe, oh, that's a good point. Maybe they're just a little, if I didn't add quite as much, too much water or something. But personally, I like it when they have a little bit of softness to it, because when it's too hard, it kind of is too bouncy and like uh, chewing gum kind of texture. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I got this out and um, I'm gonna take out spoonfuls of it so it should be easy to spoon out at this point and like soft enough to dig your spoon in but firm enough to are you um, gonna baking sheet so i i'm spooning it out and rolling it into balls just like that So we're going to do all of the um, mixture, um, roll all of it into balls. And we should get about 15 pieces out of this. And we're looking for like a one inch diameter. Are people using red bean paste instead, should do they follow the same process? Oh, yeah. So if you're using red bean paste, yeah, roll it into balls also. It'll make it easier to fill your mochi. 
I'm just rolling into like a one and a half inch, one inch, the one inch ball. We don't have to be perfect because you're not gonna really see the inside of the mochi. You're just gonna eat it, so. Doesn't have to be a perfect ball. I had a question for you guys, um, Sarah and Lisa. Do you enjoy being content creators and having an Instagram and making recipes, posting recipes? I'll let you answer first, Lisa, and then I'll copy your answer. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, I am not an attorney right now, so I'm doing what I enjoy. And it's like an easy platform for me to share uh, my mom's cooking, um, and whatnot. I mean, there's like positives to it. Of course, it's um, also stressful to be just a content creator in general, um, because you, I think most creatives go through this where you feel like you don't have, um, you're running out of creative juice. So that's kind of the negative side of content creation and social media um, in that you, you feel pressure to constantly just put stuff out there, even though you're not, yeah, I haven't perfected a recipe or something, but you just feel this pressure to need to post something. So I think that's like the big drawback, but if that's the only problem I have to deal with in this job, then I will take it. <laughs> that's not really that big of a problem in the grand scheme of things. You know, I, I'm super, I'm super happy. It's allowed me the flexibility to like uh, be with my kids too. Um, it, but also the same thing, like I'll go through different like phases where like a recipe that I know I want to like make a recipe for and it's not turning out super great and I end up having to test it like 15 times. That's super frustrating and it, you know, uh, that that's the downside, but you know, that's not a super bad downside. Obviously I like it because I'm still doing it. <laughs> wow. And when did you guys kind of start your blogs? How long ago was it? I started my not doing it like full time until 2015. 2000 what? Sorry, I didn't grab that. Started my blog in 2012, but if you were to go back and look at the archives, like um, they're not photos that I expected anyone. Like, I didn't expect anyone in my family to like look at it. Um, but I just started full time until 2015. Oh, okay. Um, so I started mine in 2014, um, and at that time I had just graduated from law school and I was trying to find a job um, in the Bay Area, and that's when I realized I didn't want to be a lawyer to begin with. So um, my husband was like, why don't you start a food blog? Because I was just obsessively following um, a lot of food blogs at the time. And then I didn't want people to find out that's what I was doing with my life because I felt it was very embarrassing that um, most of my law school friends were working at some job and I was just going to be a blogger um, but it worked out so we're okay. <laughs> I feel that too when I started my blog I was in grad school and then yeah um, I got pregnant graduation weekend so that's why that, that's why I know the year that we I went full-time because it was like well I, I'm not gonna find a job right now and then yeah. time. Um, I expected to go back into um, what I was, you know, what I graduated from, uh, but I didn't because that's where I am now. <laughs> yeah, wow. I can relate too. I, I graduated with uh, social welfare from UC Berkeley and um, I taught English for a year. I got a master's at OSU, taught English for a year, and then I was like, I want to start doing cooking classes and I don't want to be stressed out all the time. <laughs> so I just started doing cooking classes in the Bay Area and with my mom. And then, yeah, it's funny how we get these degrees and then we don't end up using them a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. What, where in the Bay Area were you teaching? Um, 
we were doing a lot of team building in San Francisco. So we would go to like their office and set up all of our mochi supplies, like all the filling, mm -hmm. all the fresh fruit and Nutella. And then we'd use a microwave and make mochi. And then they would fill the mochi and decorate it in the office. Gotcha. Yeah, that was fun. And then we did a lot of classes at our house too, through Airbnb. Oh, okay, got it. So you guys would rent out the Airbnb as a space to use? Actually, we- classes? Experiences? Have you heard of that? Uh, can you say that again? Uh, Airbnb experiences. Oh, uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, we had like a mochi one on there. Got then, it. Yeah. Out of our own house. <laughs> Did you grow up in San Francisco? No, I grew up in San Leandro. That's where my oh, family, okay. they're in San Leandro now. Got it. Yeah. Did you guys grow up in the Bay Area? I grew up in San Francisco, but um, where's- I'm from Chico, not that far, but not far. <laughs> Did you teach in, um, in the Bay Area when you taught um, English? I was actually teaching in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. I got my master's in Columbus, Ohio, taught here for a year, and then we went to California for three years, and then we moved back, um, back here to Columbus because my husband's from here. Uh, okay. We were going to fly to the Bay Area for Christmas, but I feel like it's too dangerous right now, so... Probably have to cancel that. Bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Are you done with your truffle filling? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. So we can. Mine's is kind of melting. It's okay if I stick it back into the freezer, right? Because I was rubbing it on my hands too much. Oh, here you again. All right, let me go on to, um, yeah, we're going to go on to the, the rose water mochi now. And so I'm going to get our two cups of mochi co here. Basically, um, I usually do mochi co one cup, sugar one half cup, and water one cup. So the mochi co and water ratio are always the same. Um, but this time I'm doing two cups of mochi co. So you could do a half cup of sugar or a quarter cup. I'm going to do a quarter cup because I just like things to be less sweet, um, especially since we're sweet truffle inside. So actually, I'm going to do a half cup, sorry, not a quarter cup, half cup of sugar and two cups of mochiko. Are we following, um, I've got your book open. Should I be following, let me look at the one that you emailed out. Okay. The book one has one cup of mochiko for seven pieces of mochi, oh, okay. but okay. 15 truffle pieces, this recipe has two cups of mochiko. And we're putting all the flour into a microwavable, microwave safe bowl, right? Cause we're gonna microwave this. Yeah. Uh, what do you call a uh, nonstick pot and put all the ingredients in, and then you have to continuously stir it on medium high heat the whole time. Okay, so I'm going to add two teaspoons of rose water. I like using this Cortez fan, but if you don't have rose water, that's okay. Okay, can you remind us what page in the book this recipe is on again? Oh, sure. It's on, I have it open, it's on 46. Thank you. Did you add the water already? Yeah, I'm gonna add the water right now. It actually doesn't matter what order you do it in. So two cups of water, and then I'm gonna do uh, one, 
two drops of food coloring. Where's a good place to buy rose water? I actually buy this at the Indian store, I think. That's usually where I buy it. I've also seen this in Mexican grocery stores too. You just really have to look carefully for it. Um, yeah. That's good to know. Um, so someone asked about the flavor variation. So yeah, you can do like orange extract or lemon extract or uh, fruit, use fruit juice, like strawberry juice or guava juice instead of water. And that'll make your mochi taste like that flavor. Have you ever added vanilla to it? Was that Sarah? Yeah, have you ever added vanilla extract to it? I haven't really done that, but I feel like it would taste good also. Carrie, Carrie is asking, what are the characteristics of a quality rose water? Wow, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I think this one is not that high quality, to be honest. <laughs> but it smells really rosy. Um, and it has a really strong flavor when I taste it. It's very, very pungent. So I only use a little bit like one teaspoon per cup, but I'm not really a rose water expert per se. I just use this brand all the time. Does anybody else have input on that? No, I actually said yeah. because my daughter said she wouldn't eat it if I put it in. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like rose water, yeah. She just wanted pink. She's like, I'm gonna want pink. <laughs> okay, yeah, just pink. Okay, so we're gonna do this for four minutes, uh, microwave or stovetop, medium high heat, keep stirring it. So four minutes and then we're gonna uh, stir it and then repeat another four minutes. Okay. I think while we're waiting, we can actually um, start to put the Odongo together. What are some alternatives to using the microwave? Um, you can do the stove top or you can um, steam it. So you can put your bowl, microwavable bowl straight into a steamer and cover it and uh, steam the mochi. And how do you know when it's done on the stovetop? I would say it's done when um, it's changed from like opaque color to really glossy and super, super sticky. It's not gonna be like a batter anymore. It's gonna be really, really sticky. Okay, I'm gonna to start to work with the Odongo now. So I'm gonna do green, white, and then pink. I'm just, while we're waiting, might as well do something. I have a question for you. Um, when did you start writing your cookbook? When did, you, when did I start what? Writing your cookbook, like what made, and also what made you want to make a mochi cookbook? Um, I started writing it in 2018. 
and um, I was going to self-publish it, but then I actually met up with Leslie Jonath, who's in San Francisco, and she um, she's an author, but I didn't realize she's also a book agent. So I started sharing about Mochi Magic or the Mochi book idea, and then she got excited about it, and um, that's where it hit off. And we created a proposal and started reaching out to publishers. But yeah, it's crazy the turn of events. I would have never. I don't think I would have gotten published if I hadn't met her actually. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you guys know, like, are you thinking about creating a cookbook or maybe you already have one out that I didn't know about yet? Um, not right now. It's like my hands full. Um, I don't have the time. I am actually like super impressed with the little, little ones also. What was that? I'm also super impressed that you did this with like little kids. Also. Yeah, I was like pregnant with the second one while I was um, writing the book and taking the photo. So like he was born uh, four months ago, but everything was done by then. So yeah, if I had two, if I was trying to write a book right now with two kids, I think it'd be super hard. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm impressed that you can keep producing content with two kids. That's a lot of work. Okay, so my my microwave just went off, so I'm gonna get the get that out. And the, the outside cooks before the inside, actually. So that's why we have to mix it and get consistently um, heated properly. It's going to be super duper sticky. Yeah, you might notice that the inside part is less cooked than the outside. Is it normal if it's a little bit lumpy when you're stirring it? A little blobby? A little lumpy. A lumpy. Yeah, it's okay for the first round of microwaving. It's okay if it's a little lumpy. But then that's why we want to stir it to make sure it's uh, evenly consistent. Okay, I'm gonna do another three minutes actually. Can can I I just... Oh yeah. Uh, I, can you hold it up a little closer to the camera? Oh yes. yeah. Can you see it? Okay, yeah. Is yours looking pretty sticky? Oh uh, yeah. I think, I think so. Mine's not like oh, this is hot. <laughs> yours looks a little looser than mine. Uh, Mine's like pretty Okay. Um, I could always add a little bit of water, I suppose. Yeah, let's try doing the second round of microwaving and then if it doesn't get looser, then um, yeah, let's just do, I'm gonna actually do three more than four. So it's, it's getting ready to be set. How many minutes did you say you're doing? Three. Can I show you what mine looks like? Um, and then you can tell me if, hang on, this is kind of hot. So let me, okay. so, oops. so mine kind of, it's pretty, 
it doesn't lift as much as yours. Like it's pretty solid. So it might just be that it cooked. Well, it seems like it cooked a lot more than me. I'll wait for you to get yours out and then I'll see if mine looks like that. And then I'll assess. Carrie, is there a reason why you prefer microwave to stovetop? I just think it's super convenient. Um, but actually my mom will steam the mochi in like a huge, when you're making like small batches, I feel like microwave is really easy and quick. But if you're making like 25 mochi, you can um, get like a double decker steamer and put uh, a cotton cloth on the inside and then um, pour the mochi batter onto the cloth and then put the lid on top. And that way you can make like a huge batch. But I just do it for convenience and it's a lot easier. Cleanup is easier. So yeah. I realized that I soaked my and used the pen soap skewers. <laughs> you what? I soaked skewers and then I didn't use them. I used the unsoaked ones. Oh, excuse me. Do you have a like a brulee torch, Sarah? I do. Yeah, I feel like you could just use that instead of using a boiler. Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, if it burns a little on the stick, I'm okay with that. Yeah. How do you know if the mochi is cooked? Um, it's like super sticky and thick and not like a, like before it's like a pancake batter, but now it's gonna be like one huge blob of mochi. And, um, it's gonna change color too. Like to become the the colors come out more. I just realized I forgot to put food coloring in this. Oh well. Oh, which one? Oh, but, the um. The uh, daifuku? That's okay. Can I add it now or is this too late? You can add it. Okay. As long as it gets mixed, like. Um... Yeah, I feel like that's pretty tough. Eh, I'm just going to leave it like this. <laughs> Watch out, your bowl might be very, very hot. Okay, so I can tell that it's done because it's all completely one color. Very sticky still. Exactly like mine. That's okay. I think I added it when I was filling the water, the measuring cup. I think I went a tiny bit over the line, so it might be a little bit looser than usual. I'm gonna get out the cutting board now. I'm going to put cornstarch on my cutting board, or you can use potato starch.
We usually just put the mochi, hot mochi directly onto the cutting board. We do. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna put it directly on and make sure the mochi doesn't touch any part of the cutting board that doesn't have starch on it. Oh, by the way, I recommend soaking the bowl right away in water because it will uh, get super hard to clean if you don't soak it. What would happen if you put the Odongo on the stick and then boiled it afterwards? What happened afterwards? Is it possible to put the Odongo on the stick before boiling it? Put the Odongo on the stick. Sorry, can you that? Can you put the Odongo on the stick before you boil it? I don't think so, because it's gonna just it's gonna fall off the stick while you boil it. So I'm just kind of, um, I'm rolling it in a log so that the mochi doesn't stick to my hands. So I just rolled it onto itself basically. Wow. We have a couple of people saying that theirs is like more like a blob and not as silky. Do you have any suggestions for that? That's okay. Um, I think mine got a little too much water in it. So it's supposed to look like a blob. Mine is a little bit on the wetter side, which will also work out fine, but. Sometimes the mochiko behaves differently depending on how, like how, when it's been harvested too, which is interesting. Let's turn it off here and. So are we just keeping it in a blob form right now? Yeah, just keeping, um, I would coat the top of it with the starch or roll it over itself okay. so that all the mochi are covered in starch. All right, so what we're gonna do now is um, portion these into pieces. So I'm just pinching it off with my left hand and then um, taking it off with my right hand. So pinching with my forefinger and my thumb and then uh, ripping the dough off with my right hand. Your, um, keep your hands covered with starch actually during the process. Did you say you're making, you're just turning them into balls? Yeah, so I'm separating them into little balls or okay. like this, little blobs basically. Carrie, can you tilt your camera down a little bit? Oh yeah, sure. Okay. 
How's it going so far? I have 15 blobs. Yay, great. Like I'm really tempted to weigh them. I want them to be the same size, although I know you told me that wasn't important. <laughs> you're, you're like the, the baker type, like the yeah. everything precise. Which is not a bad thing. Should we start putting filling in them if we're? Yeah, so let's start getting the filling now. So, uh, yeah, let's get our balls out of the fridge. So I'll show you how I like to fill it. I'll cover my hand with a lot of starch. And then, okay. And then I'm gonna put the little ball in the middle here. And I put two sides, the two opposite sides together. And then I'm gonna put, just basically put all of the, Oh, it's very sticky. Put all of the mochi sides into the middle. And this is like an instantly melt, right? As soon as it hits the, that's normal. What was that? It's okay that the like, truffle is like instantly melting, right? That's okay, it'll, it'll um, become hard again later. Okay. So I just um, fill it and then I round it out. And then I actually have cupcake papers you can put them inside. So how big are you making your little, your mochi um, blobs before you add the, like put the filling ball on top? Two and a half inches wide. Before I added it. My first one I made it, I think I made it too big. So it like, it looks really flat. Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little smaller then. If they're like, see how mine are, I don't know if you can really tell, this one's a bit, this one's a bad example, but like they're flattening as they sit. Is that just mean I needed probably more Mochiko in my mixture? Um, You could wait until the mochi gets colder actually. Okay. And it'll get less flat. So this is basically what I'm aiming for, right? 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Is it very similar to dumpling making? Yeah, it's similar. Yeah. <laughs> like the yeah. um, sesame balls, you wrap it kind of like this too. The dim sum kind that you fry? The boil, uh, the one you boil and you serve with the ginger broth. Oh, okay. Where did I put my cupcake liners? Oh, there we go. I think the hardest part of that is so sticky. Is your mochi still flattening a lot? Well, I stuck mine in the freeze or my um, filling in the freezer to try again because they're all like, I've only done these three so far. And they're like, they're all pretty flat. And I think that you're right. So I'm letting it cool a little bit. And then I'm also freezing my filling because I think what's happening is like these two, the filling is like completely melted inside. So I guess if you had more time, it, you would probably make the filling like the day before or something. I don't know. Well, I think um, I just forgot to put it back in the freezer like Lisa did. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I put mine back in the freezer and they're still like really solid. So that's why shaping them is really easy right now, for me at least. Do you guys have worked together in the past on like a project? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, someone says her mochi is still too hot. Sorry, I just wanna make sure you get that question. Oh yeah, so I see Mercedes has a question about her mochi is being too hot and it's melting the flattening the filling. So do you have some advice for her? Um, for like five, wait five minutes and, and fill it when it's a little cooler. But the mochi does get like more firm as it cools, yeah. I'll just use this fan that my daughter brought out for me. I just asked Zoe if she wants to come help me roll the rest of these, and she said she can't because she's working. <laughs> yeah, she's working. What? She's work working. What is she working on? She's um, she's dictating messages to her grandma on her iPad. Aww. <laughs> How old is she now? She's four. Wow. Um, yeah, so I guess I have a lot to look forward to next year. I have a random technical question for you. So you know how when I'm filling my mochi, uh, the mochi, the seam part, because like I'm basically trying to get all the dough to meet here to, to seal it up. What might happen is that like that part's going to be thicker than like the other side. Do you just kind of smooth it over like that to try to redistribute the flour? Do you see what my question is? Yeah. Like, yep. my okay. Gotcha. But to be like, sometimes that that becomes a reality where it will be a little thicker on the bottom. Got it. Yeah, because that's something my mom would totally nitpick me on if she saw me doing this. 
So it'll be like your filling is not evenly distributed inside the the mochi dough. Wow. She'll like she'll be she will want to know how to make it better. So I just thought I'd ask. I know when you're making uh, mochi ice cream, like in the book, I talk about this a little bit, but you can actually roll out the mochi dough until it's really thin. Mm -hmm. And then um, cut it with a cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. But for this kind of mochi, I think you don't want the filling to be that thin. Got it. Sorry, is your mochi like still warm when you're putting the filling in? I will, yeah, mine is still warm. It's not like hot, but it's still like warm. Okay. I think someone said her dough is still very sticky and I um, kind of saw Kaori brush a lot of cornstarch on her chopping board before she even started working so I wonder if that will help if you just like don't be afraid to use cornstarch is that what you would say yeah definitely you got you got to be heavy-handed with it because it'll you know it'll stick all over your hands All right, I let it cool, and this one is le a lot less blob-like. Oh, yay, it looks pretty. Woohoo. Yeah, so you want to use cor So the whole thing, um, when you're dusting the surface, you want to use a flour that is different from the one from the that you're using for the dough. So since we use mochiko to make the dough, you want to dust your hands and the surface with cornstarch. That's how it's going to keep from prevent the sticking. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, in worst case scenario, if you don't have cornstarch, it's gonna taste a little bit different. Like a little bit grittier, I think, with the mochi going outside. Have you ever used potato starch instead of cornstarch? Yeah, there's a Japanese kind of potato starch called katakuriko, and that's the kind um, that's usually used for mochi, actually. And you can buy that at the Japanese store. Actually, a lot of Asian stores have it. Have you ever used, like, um, just like Bob's Red Mill potato starch? I haven't tried that, to be honest. Are you using that right now? No, I'm using cornstarch because that's what you had said. Um, whatever. And I was like, I don't have time to go to the supermarket, but I had um, Bob's Red Mill potato starch. And I was like, I wonder if I should try this. <laughs> yeah, I know the Japanese kind that they use traditionally for mochi is very fine, very, yeah. very fine. It comes in a bag similar, right, to the um, the uh, glutinous rice flour, right? I wonder if I still have a bag of it. It's kind of a long plastic. Oh, wait, I do have it. It looks like this, actually. Yes, OK. Yeah, I had some bag I ran out. Yeah. Lisa, are you working really hard to redistribute your mochi evenly around each one? Kind of, kind of. Um, yeah, this takes more practice, but yes, I am attempting to. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to like redistribute the dough. I think your mom is probably more picky than me. <laughs> Most moms are. Sarah, do you guys have edible markers over there? Edible what? Um, 
like edible markers? No. Okay. Um, I. Oh wait, I can't find them. Oh wait, I found them. They sell edible markers at like Joann's oh. and for kids. Um, sometimes we'll do like mochi party and they can draw on the mochi itself. Oh, she would be into that. I don't have that, but I yeah. should. Oh. oh, did you drop one? Yeah, we're going to let that one not be. Uh -oh. Okay, um, are you guys pretty much almost done? I have, I have like four, five more. Okay. Because for the last part, we're just going to put the Odongo in a pan. Uh, glaze it and then broil it for like two minutes. How many more do you have, Lisa? It's a competition. Six. Whew, I'm going faster. I know. Probably like much, much more precise. I think someone asked if you can use tapioca starch instead. I think I we saw that question. I don't know about tapioca starch. I feel like it could, but I'm not completely sure. Can you cook the Odongo on a skillet or electric grill? Yeah, you can. And Bonnie's asking why the specific color order on the skewer? Hmm. So this color order represents um, the coming, like uh, the cherry blossom festival and the coming of spring. So it's like the, the pink represents the sakura blossom which is a cherry blossom. And then the green is like, you know, green trees and leaves in springtime. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a, that kind of, they'll, usually a lot of people will eat it during that time of the year. Because the usual dango is actually not, if you buy it at the Japanese grocery store, it's um, three white mochi on a stick versus the three different colors. Did you guys try your mochi yet? No, I wanted to get it all done. I'm a little afraid to try this one. It's just like a, it's like a puddle inside. Oh. I think it'll still taste good. Oh, I'm sure it will taste delicious. <laughs> I won, Lisa. Yeah, the first three that I did when it was really hot, the filling is completely melted inside, but um, the other ones when it was a little cooler are, are fine. Here, you can see. Do you have to store these in um, cupcake liners? Like if I did, like if I ran out of cupcake liners, what, how would you store these? Like maybe on a piece of parchment or something? Yeah, I think parchment's good. Mm -hmm. okay. I want to put them in the freezer. to freeze them and then defrost for four hours. <clears throat> so I'm going to put these in. Okay. 
What do you think? Wow, this is a lot of mochi. Do you think you guys will be able to eat all of it? Neighbors. Say that again. We'll share some of our neighbors. We'll share some of our neighbors. Nice. Mm -hmm. Except Mercedes is here making them too. We can't share with her. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what Zoella thinks. She ate it all. She said, yeah, wait, hold on. Go wash your hands. <laughs> and then ran off. She um, just like owned like in delicious happiness sounds while she was eating it. <laughs> but I will also say she doesn't like white chocolate and according to her, and she liked it. So um, she, she did not notice that it had white chocolate in it. <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> so I think we're almost ready to go on to the final step here. I think you guys are almost done, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you should totally just go ahead. Okay, well, I'm gonna get the glaze out and Give it a mix with a pastry brush to kind of loosen it up again. Okay, and then I'm gonna um, put the glaze right directly on top of the odonko. Then gonna broil it. It's okay if they're touching. Yeah, I think it's fine. But no, actually, you know what? They don't, maybe it's better if they don't touch. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it'll be a huge deal, but. I have a question. If I were to leave the glaze off of a couple of them, would they still, would you still, still think they would be delicious? I'm wondering for um, the little one, she might not be so into. Yeah, I think it's still fine. It's a very light taste. So if she's, yeah. How do you store both mochis, Carrie? What? What are your instructions for storing both recipes afterwards? The odango? Uh, for both of them. For the daifuku, I would just um, put it in an airtight container and put it, leave it on the counter. Uh, and you probably have to eat it by tomorrow. Or you can freeze it and um, defrost it for four hours when you want to eat it. For these ones, I would um, put them in the fridge and then you'd have to re-grill them or you know microwave them again or rebroil them for two minutes. So I'm gonna broil these now for, I'm gonna start with two minutes first. Did you um, glaze both sides or just like the top? I just glazed the top. I should have turned my phone off my further on. Way past the time at this rate. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to put the sauce on all of them and give them to her and see what she thinks. OK. How close do you put the skewers to the top of the oven? I put it on the top rack. Uh, no, I, I put mine on the middle rack, so I say go for the middle rack. Like just a quick brush, like do you kind of glop it on?
I saw Kaori do it, and I think she just spread the sauce very liberally on the right. But, you spread the sauce very liberally on the. Dango. I like to have some left. You can use the, all of it actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, it looks like it's been pretty good. If somebody, if they are grilling instead of broiling, should they save some glaze to add on after cooking? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, you can save it for after. Okay. All right. I will borrow them. How long do I, I don't have the document open. Does anyone know? I would say borrow them until they have a little caramelization on the top. Okay. Like a little bit of browning. I have a lot of dishes. Does everybody else have a lot of dishes? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a lot, huh? I actually moved mine up a little bit because I wasn't really browning. Carrie, if people aren't using glaze, how do you recommend they they cook it? If they're not using glaze, I think you can just eat it as it is, or you can eat it with red bean paste. Um, I think it's best with the glaze, but yeah. I also have a matcha odango oh, glaze in here too. And a black sesame one too. The matcha glaze you can make just with um, a quarter cup sugar, two teaspoons cornstarch, one teaspoon matcha and one half cup water. And then you kind of you cook it the same way as the other the glaze we made tonight. Can you just check it on the jungle. Sarah, has yours started to caramelize yet or not really? Mine hasn't really yet. Oh, I think you're muted right now. Sorry, I put mine in a lot after yours. Um, so no, not yet, but I also just moved, moved it up. I have to put a timer on always when I get the broiler. I forget, forget that I'm more
Yeah, I know. It's I'm scared I'm gonna burn mine too. A little bit of color. How do I show? Is this enough? Oh, that's hot. <laughs> oh, those look nice. More color, do you think? So they a little bit, yeah. This, um, this more, but they look. I mean, they look pretty much ready to go. Okay, I'll put them in for just a tiny bit longer. I got a bunch of the glaze on the sticks, so that's what's happening. Browning on it. Oh, okay. I think these look good. Let me show them to you for approval. Yeah, those look really good. And then if you have to glaze in the pan, you can just put more on top of the dongo. Okay. Oh, yeah, I have a little bit left. I couldn't get it all on. Yeah, I'm just putting a little more on top will help with the flavor. And what did you say about how soon after these are made that you need to eat them? I'm wondering when I need to text my neighbors to talk about mochi. When you, what was that? Like how quickly do you recommend eating them after at this point? But like, will they, how for how long will they still be yummy? Um, I think for a few hours at least, maybe like three hours. Okay, cool. Yeah. Somebody wanted you to repeat the matcha glaze ingredient recipe and ingredient. It's one quarter cup sugar, two teaspoons cornstarch, one teaspoon matcha, and a half cup of water. And you just whisk it really well. And then you um, bring it to a boil until it thickens. And then you, it's pretty much ready to use. Is the glaze supposed to brown significantly um, I during would... the process? Can I, oh, can I just quickly see yours? Oh, mine actually, some of them got brown, but some of them didn't. But not all. Gotcha, so, okay. I don't think they have to, like maybe just a tiny little brown spot. You don't have to like get it got too it. brown. And even um, a lot of times I don't even broil them. I actually just eat them straight after boiling it and just put glaze on it and eat it. So the broiling is kind of more for just making it look a little nicer. Got it. I'm going to leave it like this then. But make sure to put a lot of glaze on it actually. It tastes better with the glaze. Hmm. 
Yeah. It's hot, so be careful. Ellie? Mm. What do you think? Soy sauce. Soy sauce? Oh, she notices. You like this one? <laughs> Yep. Harry, do you recommend any specific type of soy sauce to use? I just use a uh, Kiko Mom soy sauce. Just this one. <clears throat> we we used um tamari sauce to keep the gluten free. Oh, the tamari one. Mm -hmm. How did yours turn out, Lisa? Let me unmute myself. Um, I think that's okay, right? Yeah, it should looks, be a little more brown. It looks good to I me. Yeah, I felt like um, like it was already in there for six minutes, and I could see um, like a bubble forming on the actual mochi, and then I just figured I don't mind it that texture anyway, so I'll just eat it like that. Good. Is it normal? Like yours, do your, does your mochi, um, does the dango like bubble, form a little bubble? Um, to be honest, I didn't get like, I mean, I, not all of them are charred. Like some of them have a little bit. Yeah, gotcha. Not like, yeah, you know, I, I bet those were touching the bottom. Yeah. If you have like a grill pan, it's probably more accurate, but that's okay. I usually honestly don't really broil it. It's just more for the looks. Yeah. Yeah. And then. <laughs> yeah, I feel like these are like, these are, I would totally serve these to people. Like that's how mine looked like. I mean, they're not red because I forgot the food coloring. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go. My husband likes eating mochi, which is great. I mean, I do too, but thankfully he does also. I think that the, I let them cool, they turned out okay. It looks so pretty now. Yay. This is the one. This is the like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, can I see your other ones? Oh, yeah. Here, this one is maybe the best one. Awesome. It's awesome. I'm gonna eat this like this like super melted one and I'm sure it's gonna be even like super delicious because of the like gooey melty chocolate inside but yeah I feel like you could also use like peppermint like for Christmas theme you could mix like peppermint extract and put like candy mm. pieces maybe in the side of it. that would be kind of um interesting So I guess we'll wrap up now. Thank you so much, Sarah and Lisa for joining. And um, yeah, it's been fun. Thanks, Noella, for joining too. You can <laughs> represent kids out there. <laughs> I've seen Mercedes Batchers, looks really good too. And everybody, yeah, please um, consider buying Mochi Magic. It's um on Barnes and Noble and a lot of independent booksellers have it too so if you want to support local um check your bookstore they usually probably will have it and I think Target sells it and yeah so thank you so much everybody thank yeah and if you guys made some you should totally take a picture and tag um Kauri. can you say what what's your handle on Instagram it's um Kauri's kitchen so Kauri S kitchen 
You can hashtag what you're using, hashtag Mochi Magic, right? Yeah, hashtag Mochi Magic. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. I'm excited. I think we're going to do some of these like, animal ones next, but um, she loves Mochi, so it won't be a hard sell. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Have a great holiday and be safe and everything. And I. We'll be in touch. Thanks, Sarah and Lisa. Thanks, Joe. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having us. Thank you.